Good morning. Well, I'm gearing myself up to get out there in the garden and uh, work on the rabbit fencing. If you saw my last video that went up, um, we've got rabbits galore out there. And I never got the rabbit fencing done around the big garden. Uh, I got, uh, I think, almost half of it done. But I definitely need to get the other half taken care of because yeah they're everywhere every morning when i walk out i'm seeing rabbits out there and so far they haven't found my garden but i think i'm on borrowed time with that so i'm going to be out there working today on that um, it's going to be a scorcher another scorcher uh, once again we still got pretty much zero chances of rain in the 10-day forecast still um, we have not had any rain since before well before I built the duck garden fence. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting quite dry. Um, I think I might be able to actually mow the fence line back there uh, where I had set up that camera to try and see what was coming out of the woods, which by the way, we've not gotten a picture of anything. Um, there's still been nothing coming up here by the fence. Um, so. I think we're in the clear for a little while at least. Um, but anyways, that fence line back there, that is an area that stays very wet. Um, it stays muddy for a long, long time and we had such a wet early spring and late winter that it was just a quagmire back there. And a couple weeks ago, actually, um, when I did that video where I was talking about the predator and I was putting that camera out there, even at that point, I could barely walk through there still and we had not had rain for a bit. Um, so I'm going to maybe this evening take a walk back over there and see if it's even remotely possible for the tractor to get back there yet um, because I've not been able to mow the fence line and um, yeah, because it's been too wet, but with this little mini mini drought we're already going into, maybe I'll be able to before too long. So back behind me here, you can see I've got the wisteria. I uh, had a little incident about a week or so ago where I was sitting out here on the porch, enjoying my porch swing and my coffee or tea or whatever it was I had that day, and I glanced over at my wisteria and I noticed these little beetles on it and they were not beetles I was familiar with and I wasn't sure exactly what they were so I looked them up and they were kudzu beetles apparently kudzu beetles love wisteria and they will have two generations each season the first generation will start out on the wisteria plant the second generation will move to any beans in the area. Mmm, yes. So, I immediately grabbed my neem oil and I doused them all with neem oil and the next day I came out here and I looked and there was not a single kudzu beetle to be seen anywhere. Um, I've not seen any since. Uh, I, I do need to do a thorough inspection, um, but I've, I'm not seeing any signs of them. I haven't seen any eggs or anything like that on there, so I think it took care of it um, because all I could think of is I'm dealing with enough insects when it comes to my beans. I've had Mexican bean beetles out there, I've had cucumber beetles out there, and I've had a couple other beetles that I'm, I've yet to identify, uh, all, all devouring my beans. And so yesterday, I went ahead and I sprayed them down with some insecticidal soap, again, safe for organic gardens, um, and so hopefully that will take care of it because the neem oil wasn't touching them. Neem oil is great. It is an insecticide, it is a fungicide, and it's a miticide. However, it does not work for every insect out there. And I actually have a chart that I got from my extension office in the area that it's this little swivel chart and it talks about all of your basic plants, whether it's beans, corns, tomatoes, what have you. And then it lists the 
insects that you generally have the most trouble with. And then it shows you which insecticides are for that particular insect. And while neem oil is great for a lot of things, it isn't great for everything. There's some things it doesn't do a thing for. And um, so you have to look at what your options are. And the chart that I have, it actually shows not just commercial insecticides, but it also shows um, things that are specifically safe for organic gardening and it is a great resource um, if you are interested in something like that you might want to check your local extension offices and see if they have something like that I believe um, the one that I have was made by the Alabama University um, maybe A&M or something like that I forget um, but it, it's a great resource so I will go out there and check out my bean plants and see if I see any insects on there this morning. Um, I sprayed it last night. Uh, you don't want to spray your plants with any kind of oil or anything like that in the morning because if it's on the leaves, I mean think of suntan oil on your skin in the middle of the day. Um, back when I was a teenager I might have done that a few times. Um, yeah, uh, it's not good for your skin and in the same way it'll cause the leaves to burn and scorch and so anytime you spray your, your plants like that you want to do it in the evening. Alright, so another little tidbit. I'm out here with my jar of soapy water and I have a glove on because as tough as I am, I'm still not a fan of picking up bugs by hand. It just kind of grosses me out a little bit. So I'm out here with a gloved hand and I'm looking for squash bugs because it is that time of year. And I'm out here, I'm doing my watering and like as soon as I water, I see them moving around. Um, they're trying to hide. Now, here's the thing. If you see one, look for the other because it is mating season and where there's one squash bug there's usually two and you don't want to get one and miss the other so be thorough when you're looking and they're sneaky little little devils uh, they like to hide but I find that the easiest time to find them is when you're watering because they're trying to move away from the water and uh, you can spot them Little Miss Stumber was following me around the garden. She's being a little cuddly today, like a typical cat. She had to be in the mood for snuggles. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, wag the tail, wag the tail. Hi, baby. Mm. Where's your brother, huh? Where's your brother, Stumper? out here to do some watering. I got the rabbit fencing finished all around the garden today. It was a scorcher, <laughs> but uh, I got that taken care of. That was a biggie and uh, happy about that. So now I'm gonna do some watering and I've got my jar of soapy water again so I can watch for more squash bugs. So I've had a few people asking me about the loofah and how the loofah are doing. Well, I'd say they're growing. <laughs> it's 
so I keep having to grab them and direct them up the trellis because of course they want to sprawl across the the bed and and say hello to the tomatoes and uh, every so often one of them will sag down here so I'm trying to keep them all up so that they stay away from the ducks and out of reach of the ducks and that completely random squash plant over here um, I think it's safe to say that this was a loofah also uh, I think a the day I was out here planting, I set the packets down and one of the seeds must have fallen down into the crack um, alongside the dirt without me noticing. And you can see where the ducks have been coming over here and eating those quackers. But uh, we've got some vines that are getting out of their reach over here too. So it looks like I'm going to have... Uh, Lufa's growing on both sides. Got tomatoes, cluster of them over there. I need to come tie this branch up before it falls and splits the plant. It's getting pretty heavy. Got a whole bunch of tomatoes right back in here. Look at that, gorgeous. These are those beautiful blue beauties. Just look at that. These over here, these were some of the Dr. Wikes right there. Doing pretty good. We've got tomatoes. So bit by bit, the garden's coming along. And uh, some of these things I've actually had to come in here and prune back. Um, for instance, I've got some beautiful blue Monday sage right here that's blossoming, that's got the flowers you can see here. But it grew so thick, it's covering up my thyme down here. And uh, so I pruned some of that back, same as the the Tulsi basil, that's kind of gone crazy. And then I trimmed back some Cosmos as well to give that poor time a little bit of space. So all of the zinnias that I have down here are the Mazurkia zinnias. And right over here, I've got my very first queen lime zinnia preparing to bloom. These ones were started from seed when I planted this bed. And uh, I'm excited to see them come up. <sighs> I do love the zinnias. Though there is one flower that I'm not too terribly impressed with. I had really high hopes for it and I was super excited about it. But, well, these are the chocolate cosmos. And the flowers are sparse. There's not much to them. Um, but the real disappointment is these are supposed to smell like chocolate and honestly there's no smell. <laughs> I can't smell anything on these things. I'll be honest, I don't know if I'll grow them a whole lot. I, I do have a few more packets so I might um, use up the seeds next year but I don't know if I'll purchase them again just because you know the same number of plants of these giving all these flowers as opposed to those really sparse little bitty puny black magic ones so now like i said i did get the fencing done the rabbit fencing around the big garden i do still need to go back and put uh, fencing nails and attach it to the wood post i just have it zip tied for the time being That'll work, but over time those zip ties, even if they say you're, they're UV safe and all that, they do eventually break down. And so I'm going to go out there uh, at, at some point here and use some fencing nails. But tomorrow morning, uh, my kayaking trip had gotten delayed. So I think tomorrow morning might be the day because yet again, it's gonna be hot and there's gonna be no rain, so. I do believe tomorrow is going to be time for hitting the water. So thanks for hanging out with me guys and I'll talk to y'all next time.